That Great Business Show, winner, highly commended award, Irish Podcast Awards. Welcome to episode 183 of That Great Business Show, home of great business tips, insights and opportunities on every episode. Delivered, as always, in our commute-friendly package. Unlock the full potential of your business with Mentors Work, Ireland's award-winning, fully government-funded mentoring program designed to fuel the growth of your business, no matter the sector or size. Mentors Work will help transform your business by providing tailored guidance through one-on-one mentoring sessions, upskilling workshops, as well as networking opportunities. Together with your mentor, you'll also craft a customized six-month business plan to propel your business forward. Try it and test it, and already empowering over 3,000 Irish businesses, register for free today on mentorswork.ie. I'm Conal O'Mora and Fautistiach on this episode, Flying Under the Radar. That's what I did for many happy school-going years. I sat at the back of the class and let the bright guys do the talking. But no more. A seven-year-old data analytics company is determined to out the laggards and the blackguards. Thank God I got out in time. And we do not cry wolf on this podcast. We tell it like it is. As part of a new mini-series, we have a small cafe owner with us who tells us how tough, tough, tough things are and how he would solve the problems. De facto, the revolutionary shaving oil, changing the face of shaving. For the smoothest shave of your life, just add water. No more lathering up or cleaning up afterward. Just add a few drops of water and you're ready to go. De facto's blend of all natural oils hydrates and protects your skin. No more razor burns or irritation. A spa treatment for your face. Perfect for all skin types and lasts so much longer than traditional foams or gels. De facto, a shaving revolution. Just add water. Available from selected pharmacies and from defactoshave.com. Athena Analytics is a company with a mission. They want to unlock the potential of every student in every classroom using machine learning. They say they can help schools understand a student's unique individual potential and ensure that no student gets missed out within the school system. The Athena Tracker is a monitoring tool that creates a student's baseline potential in each subject and highlights when a student falls below this potential when they might need further support. This baseline is based on statistical models built using the exam results of all the previous results of students on the software. And when a student falls behind, the teacher receives an alert and can investigate what is going on with the student and whether any additional support or intervention is required. The company was set up in 2017 in Tralee County Kerry by super statistician Emily Brick, who joins us on That Great Business Show. Emily, tough fault to wrote. Thanks, Connell. I'm, I'm glad you said all that so I don't have to. <laughs> well, I took it off your website, so <laughs> okay. you did actually say it yourselves. Come here to me. I will get on to how you do it in a second. Data analytics is just one of those buzzwords or buzz terms. Lots of people using it. Not that many people understanding it. You, by your training, by your nature, you've been a lecturer in statistics. You eat, sleep, dream statistics. <laughs> what do data ana- anal- analytics people, what would you call them? Data analyzers? Is that what you call them? Data analysts? Analysts. We'll try that. Yeah. What do they do? Well, I suppose to try to explain it in one line, you know, uh, a data analyst would take a large amount of data or information and make it into, put it into a consumable form for someone. So, in you know, an interpretable report or, you know, a visualization or something like that. So pages and pages and pages and pages all dropped into a piece of software. Yes? No? Not necessarily software. It could be a report, but yeah, it could be a software. Just easy to consume information. Yeah, it could be millions of lines of code, millions of lines of data, you know, in, transformed into something easily understandable by anyone. And so I think of Excel sheets and Excel Mm. documents, and that is now being gobbled up by clever pieces of software and made more digestible, as you say. Yeah, that's a good way of thinking about it, but it doesn't necessarily have to come from Excel. It could be, you know, any sort of information that can be analyzed or data points. So 
on to Athena and, and analytics. You are looking, or you could be looking at 400 uh, schools, so there are 700 to choose from, so you're almost there. You are looking at a vast number of data points, I presume. Everybody's uh, exam results all yep. put onto a piece of paper and then back into the machine. That's one way of looking at it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the only way I'll be looking at it, so you keep telling me how it actually does it. So the software, the Athena Tracker, what it does is we take all the aptitude tests that students do and any exam results they do, and we create a baseline for them in, in, in each subject. They're compared with that baseline throughout school then. So for the main purpose of highlighting when they dip below that potential. So traditionally, academic tracking would be who's at the top of the class, let's look after them, oh no, one of them has dipped, what we do about it. You know, they are given a lot of attention. So the goal of our software is to give every single student that attention, you know, that no one is drifting to, through school without understanding where their potential lies. You're looking at somebody who probably wouldn't like this very much <laughs> because there would be a spotlight put on him. I liked being away from the limelight. <laughs> well, you see, then you might have achieved your potential and that's what this is all about. <laughs> So what happens next? So you, you have done all of the analysis on Conal Moran. What happens next? So it's a live software that, you know, teachers are using every day. So like, I'll just give you an example. Students might be just after sitting their Christmas exams and there might be one student after dipping below across the board in each subject. And like, uh, then a year ahead might have a conversation with them about, you know, what's happened here? Why aren't you achieving your potential? And, and you know, that has a whole host of different results. You know, sometimes it's just very motivating for the student to understand, oh, I was tracking against something, I'm suddenly not, you know, what do I need to do to get back up there? Or maybe I'll start doing a little bit of work. You know, that's typically a second year response. Or, you no, know, no, 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 sixth year. <laughs> <laughs> depends, depends. But, you know, or like, you know, in some cases it might be like, oh, actually there's something going on at home with the student that we didn't realise. They might be having some mental health issue that the school wasn't aware of. Or, you know, they might just be struggling in some way. So, you know, it's a really powerful alert that, you know, the student's behaviour has, you know, changed across the board that might get missed, you know, just looking at a subject by subject or, you know, not giving each student this attention. Powerful, yes. Intrusive, question mark. Like, you are, are there GDPR and all of those kind of issues involved? Yeah, of course, GDPR is a huge consideration. You know, we've we've gone to a lot of effort to make sure all the data is encrypted and really stored really safely. Hang on now, it's encrypted, but therefore, how do you know it's Conal Moran? So we don't know, the school knows. Ah, but okay. I mean, from for anyone else other than the school. So in terms of intrusive, like, I think when people hear algorithm machine learning, they think, oh, the individual individuality has gone out of it, you know, whereas actually this gives each student really specific attention um, around, you know, just where they could be at or where they should be at. You know, these are really attainable results, this this baseline. So, you know, kind of shines a light on each student as opposed to treating everybody the same. You must be doing something right, because even since you last updated your website, you've gone from 300 to 400 schools. <laughs> that is not bad. I mean, you're actually really whacking it away. Yeah, well, I mean, the great thing about schools is, you know, they really listen to each other. So even when I started this off initially, I was doing reports for schools on how they got on the Leaving and Junior Cert. That was the first thing I, I, I did, you know. Why with did schools. you choose that? So I came back from Australia and I just kind of wanted to set up a business as a data analytics consultant, we'll say. And I got to working with one school on this. And then I kind of said, oh, maybe this is something other schools would like. And so I put it out there to other schools and there was a lot of interest. So I started doing that reports for a lot of schools. And then through going in and out to the schools and talking about this, what kept coming up and again and again was like the need for this type of tracking that was individual to each student. So it really came straight from the schools and it was being said to me in so many different, by so many different schools that I couldn't ignore it. It was clearly the opportunity to, to pursue. And in terms of the growth, you know, the first couple of schools really had come to us with the idea. So, so they were straight away signed up. And then the way, the, the main way it has grown is schools recommending it to each other. Word of mouth cannot be beaten. Yeah, it's powerful, definitely. And how far can you go? 400 now, 700 is the max. What happens then? Well, I suppose from our perspective in business, like our real focus is on getting this right for the schools in Ireland. It is right. You know, we are, you know, all the schools are using it and they're happy. But, you know, just making sure any tweaks, any ways we can make it more easy, like that we do that. Like we think, you know, this is a real different take on academic tracking that's never been done before in Ireland. And, you know, it's a privilege for us to to be the ones doing it. 
So we really want to get that right. So, you know, that first and foremost is our priority. And you said first in Ireland. Is it being done elsewhere? So, yeah, there are, there are in other countries, some similar things are being done. You know, like in the UK, um, predicted results are used for, you know, going towards college and stuff. That's a very strange system they have. You don't actually get your results. You predict the result and then you're allowed into Cambridge or Oxford and all those nice places. Yeah, so it's very different, you know, and ours really isn't about predicting where a student is at. It's about, you know, where, like, could you be at around now? You know, it is different. You know, it's not for the purpose that they're using. So it's less, you know, there is this danger around this type of system that it could become a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, you go into first year and you're you're told you're going to get a H3 in Irish. So then your your teacher is telling you, your parent is telling you, everyone's telling you it. So eventually you get a H3 in Irish, you know, and everyone says, ah, should we knew it. But, you know, that's a dangerous thing, obviously, because, you know, we say that the baseline we produce is the ground for a student to stand on, you know, the sky is the limit. So like our thing. nice term. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's our thought is that it should be very discreet throughout the software. Nowhere is there a blatant label. This is what you should get. It's just really discreet colour coding. So it is a different approach to the UK, you know, because it's for a different purpose. And I presume you are charging per pupil. Is it that how it works? How, what's the business model? So it's a fixed cost plus per student cost. So and, it's a mix. And the joy of this is that every year it must be 60 or 70,000 new students join the system. Is that it? Something like that. Yeah. So yeah. I'd say you've covered, you've counted them all, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> and I, well, that means it's a nice little business, nice little earner. And you also told me that you have effectively started exporting because you are now into Northern Ireland. Uh, so we're in a couple of UK schools, yeah. But, you, you know, that isn't our focus, I suppose. You know, my goal would be that in a couple of years, we would try get a team to look at that as well. Why not now? Like our focus is on making, you know, putting everything into getting the Irish one as good as it can be. Are you worried about competition? No, it's not competition. It's it's what I said about that. You know, that you know, I, th- I think we've been given a really profound task of getting this right for the schools, you know, and I feel really strongly about doing that. You are a perfectionist, aren't you? (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) And funding, does it need funding? So from the start of the business, you know, it's been revenue generating. I was like lucky that when I came back, I didn't know of any supports you could get. So I had to uh, generate revenue. So from the start, we've we've had an income and that's what's mostly uh, generated. That's fabulous. From the beginning. Yeah, which is a great mindset to be in from the start, you know, that that's where you're, you're, that's what your costs need to come under, you know, the revenue. But I should say like um, early on in the business at that point where I was thinking about going from the reports to the tracker, like I was doing the Acorns program. So for anyone that doesn't know, the Acorns is a peer group uh, mentoring program that is for women who in rural Ireland that have set up in are in their first 18 months of business. Run by the fabulous Paula Fitzsimons. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So um, I was doing that at the time when I was going in and out of schools and, and being told I should do this tracker. And like definitely because I was doing Acorns, I'd say is part of the reason why I did it. I went for, you know, doing, creating the software because, you know, I was going into each session being like, oh, this is what schools are saying. And they were like, do it, you know. Whereas, you know, if you just go to your friends and family about these things, they might say, oh, that sounds very complicated, you know. So that definitely helped. And while I was in Acorns, I met Caroline Reedy. Uh, she's from the HR suite, um, another powerful woman. And that she, we have had on the program or on brilliant. the podcast. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah, so she actually, um, I met her through Acorns and she ended up was investing. Was she your mentor? She was, yeah. Ah, good. Because that really, really works. That whole mentor thing is just basically fabulous. Yeah, it's brilliant. You know, you have this round table of, I think we had nine people at a similar stage in business, which is fantastic because you can hear people, you know, going through similar challenges that you are. And then you have a, a lead entrepreneur that facilitates it. Now, I don't think the goal is that someone invests out of it. Just to be clear, Paula had killed me that I was advertising this. But um, Caroline did invest in my business afterwards. You know, we spoke about it and she got involved, which was fantastic. Again, validating the idea. And then also I got support from the local enterprise office. Which one? Uh, Kerry. You have to give them a shout out. Oh, absolutely. They will love you. Yeah, no, I mean, they were brilliant. And again, like, I think it was really helped me that when I went into them and first became aware, it was a thing that I had generated revenue. And then they recommended going for a business expansion grant. So that's what helped me to build the tracker. Again, validating the idea and making me say, okay, I'll, I'll go for this. 
And they've supported me a lot since as well. The day you walked in, were they enthusiastic about it? Did they say, wow? They were. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, they were. so, so positive about people like that. Yeah. That just, uh, and that's were, what you want, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. And they have been since, you know, um, I've often just rang them about different ideas or different things we've been working on and they've been really supportive anywhere. Like any time I meet any of them, they're like, just tell us how we can help. You know, they want to help. You know, they're brilliant. You also have built yourself another one, which is a fabulous board. I was looking at your names. Yeah. Pretty impressive. D- yeah. Shout them out because people are going to say, OK. Um, yeah. So Professor Anya Highland, she's on it. Um, John O'Regan. Was she your professor? No. No. Because I did say that you lectured in UCC, didn't you? Yeah, so yeah. so she was a vice president in, in UCC and Emiratus Professor of Education. And she like is, you know, one of the most influential voices in education in Ireland and really fantastic in terms of getting involved in all the debates, you know, f- for all the right reasons, you know. And she writes articles about changes in education, what her opinion is on it, you know, and she's willing to say, OK, I've listened to your argument, I changed my mind. So, do you know, to have her involved is really fantastic. And um, she, uh, yeah, she's been a great asset. And sorry, I can't go through all of all of them. But uh, Paul Harron is on it. Uh, John O'Regan, Eric Wostinski, he was my lecturer in statistics. And Brendan O'Keefe. I think that's it. I think of everyone. I hope I've <laughs> that everyone. Is a, but it's a powerful board. Like, you know, let's be honest, it's a small company. Yeah. How many of you are there? Well, there are nine of us in Kerry yeah. and 14 of us all together. Yeah. yeah. And uh, like the board is as big yeah. as the staff. <laughs> yeah, but they're all, again, so enthusiastic about we're, what we're doing. And, you know, it's really great. You know, they, they bring that education lens. How did you attract them? Because people would love to have that calibre of board. Well, Professor Highland started it and she was the time... You call of, her Professor when you're talking to her? No, no, no. She would <laughs> she would correct me and tell me to call her on, yeah. But she, uh, she was on the news uh, talking about the cancelled Leaving Cert and her opinion on what the they should do about the Leaving Cert, which was something we were trying to weigh in on as well at the time. And um, I happened to mention this to my uncle. Um, he's... Uh, Emiratus Professor of History. But of course. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, I must get all the terms too. right <laughs> now if he listens. But uh, so Morris Brick, but he, I said this to her, I was like, I was listening to this woman speak and, you know, she was excellent, but kind of was in contrast with what we were saying at the time. And he said, do you want to talk to her? And I said, I'd love to. And so I spoke with her on the phone and like, you know, I was really expecting, because we were coming at it from very different angles, I was expecting it to be a bit um, confrontational maybe, but like she could not have been more open to listen to what I thought about it. And we had a great chat and that relationship grew and, you know, she really became someone who advised me a lot. And as a result, we came about the, you know, setting up the the board and the rest of them came from other links um, different people that were recommended. Um, they're all fantastic in their own right. I, um, and I suppose our most recent person that we recruited was Brendan O'Keefe. Um, he is a, a lecturer in uh, physical education in UL and he has come because we have brought in the fitness mark. Ah, now, perfect segue <laughs> because I wanted to bring this in. Yeah. Because it is uh, brain and body, isn't it, what you're doing? Yeah, and like this this really grew, started from, you know, PE teachers saying, look, this tracker is great, but it doesn't really allow us to talk to parents about how their child is doing in PE class, you know, and, you know, it's an area that has become more and more important. So what it does is it tracks basically uh, fitness test results in PE class, you know, and it it allows a way for, you know, students to see where their strengths are in sport. If I, if there is a, <laughs> take a class of 25, can I see the other fellas uh, fitness levels no, or? Yeah, no. Because that is a big problem, isn't it? Yeah. And like, again, that would go against it, what we really, you know, believe in and are trying to do. Like it's about how you are doing versus yourself. And I mean, with the fitness market will be compared with norms for your age group so that you can see, you know, is there something you need to work on? And laziness in my case. I mean, it could be <laughs> laziness. I mean, that's the tracker. It's it's written all over the tracker in some parts. But, you know, it just again, like the tracker gives that objective conversation. You know, a teacher isn't saying, oh, you know, she uh, she always forgets her gear or uh, she's no interest in sport or uh, he's interested, but he's very unfit. You know, all these kind of subjective things you could say, it actually makes it very objective. You know, could say, oh no, she's really strong endurance. 
with other areas of sport you might want to work on or, you know, he's very low on everything. Maybe he should take up a sport. And give me a case study of anything you want to choose, but in terms of what the uh, analysis has delivered. Have you seen or have schools that you who are using your system, have they seen a jump in performance? Definitely, yeah. Like, I mean, it's fascinating, like, you know, that we've just brought this to schools and they really take it on in so many different ways. But, you know, for some schools, you know, they would look at, you know, a group that's falling below their potential and they would focus in on that group uh, and, and just really try their best to make sure that group comes back up to their potential. So, yeah, lots of schools have tracked the groups that have fallen throughout and seen them go back up to their uh, to their norms. But, you know, the case studies that are the most powerful are those, you know, where we hear that this allowed us to catch something going on with a student that really otherwise we'd have missed. Or even, you know, across the board, like there are certain time points when students tend to drift. So, you know, a student comes in in first year, they're flying, you know, the tests are easier. They're really enthusiastic, eager to be there. They're all getting 90, 100 percent, you know. And in general, in second year, you see a lot of students starting to drift below because they're kind of don't understand why they're doing exams. They have no interest. They're off doing other things. So like that has been a really good time point in that like students can start to be told, oh, look, you know, you're drifting a little bit below your potential and, you, you know, it can catch them then. So that has been really a big result, you know, that they're having these types of conversation earlier in school. And there's also the hormone question. I mean, do you, you hardly track that, do you? I mean, <laughs> boy meets girl and all that kind of, which throws it all brains out. No, no, we just stick to the exam results. Okay. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> come here to me. You are reticent for whatever reason, but I will assume, because you've got the smart, I mean, when you see your CV, you've got an MA in statistics, is that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You will, this is, you've cracked this one. I mean, you've done it, haven't you? There's no reason on God's earth that you cannot bring this abroad in a big, big way. Will you do it? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to stick with what I've said already. Uh, no, um, I, I'm trying to break you. Yeah, see? no, no. I mean, definitely. And I also should mention, I did, you know, when I've mentioned Acorns, I also did Going for Growth, another one of Paula's programs, yeah. which again, like was fantastic. I did that just last year and really good for like, how are you going to bring your business to the next level? And every single meeting was, how is the UK going, you know? Um, no, definitely. It's definitely on the radar. And I suppose It'll be, you know, we've done really well to build this to the point it is at with, you know, it's little funding. Well, yeah. yeah. So I, I would like to continue doing that. So it would be a few years before, you know, we would have the resources to build a full team out in the UK, which I think is what we'd need. I don't want to disrupt anything here. You know what they say? Go for it. You've got to go for it. <laughs> and go, or go home, go bro go home or what is it? Go, go for it or go home or whatever the yeah. term is. Final question that we always ask is... Who would you hire in a heartbeat? Well, I actually was going to say Professor Anya Highland. <laughs> yes, but well, you're allowed to, but you already have her. Yeah, well, she's on the advisory board, but I was trying to think, you know, if I was to, if I wanted someone to lead the company other than me, like who would it be and who would it do it right? And she would be my answer to that. That's fair. Yeah. That's allowed. Yeah. Okay. Will you please come back to us, but not in three or four years time, but sooner <laughs> When you are literally taking the UK or wherever uh, by storm, I mean, would it apply in all jurisdictions that you're aware of, you know, Germany, Japan or wherever? Yeah, I mean, you just need to adjust for each education system there. The, the really great thing about the Irish education system is, you know, it's very standardised. You know, we've three years, then you've the junior cycle exams, then at the end of sixth year, you've the leaving cert. In other countries, it's a bit messier. So we would acquire some adapting, yeah. But you'll do it. Absolutely, sure. Emily Brick, founder of Athena Analytics. Thank you for joining us on That thank Great you. Business Show. And a big thank you as well for traveling four hours up <laughs> and four hours down just to join us here. Thank you, Arish Gurmagan. You're welcome. That Great Business Show. De facto, the revolutionary shaving oil, changing the face of shaving. For the smoothest shave of your life, just add water. No more lathering up or cleaning up afterward. Just add a few drops of water and you're ready to go. De facto's blend of all natural oils hydrates and protects your skin. No more razor burns or irritation. A spa treatment for your face. Perfect for all skin types and lasts so much longer than traditional foams or gels. De facto, a shaving revolution. Just add water. Available from selected pharmacies and from defactoshave.com. That great business show. Winner, highly commended award, Irish Podcast Awards.
Big Red Cloud, Ireland's number one cloud accounting software for small business owners, are big supporters of that great business show. And thanks to them, we bring you Business 101, a mini series about setting up and growing your business. Adrian Reynolds is owner of the Lemon Crepe and Coffee Company, and he joins me in studio with Ian Hobbs, sales manager at Big Red Cloud. Adrian, Ian, thank you for joining me on that great business show. Pleasure. And Adrian, we're going to talk about the problems of business. Which particular problem would you like to start with? Take your pick. (laughs) (laughs) I guess in that your business is, let's describe the business. Coffee shop, yes? Yeah, coffee, uh, coffee, crepes, uh, omelettes, kind of strong breakfast emphasis, lunch, and uh, yes, uh, appeals right across the uh, the sector of um, spectrum. Families, you know, young children, tourists, students. And you have been out yeah, of a while. 20, coming into our 25th year this summer. And so, l- been around. low barriers to entry, which always intrigues me. Uh, many, if not most people say, oh, I could do that. Yeah, yeah. But. It's easy to do whatever <laughs> on your kitchen counter from home. Um, Tell us about the pain. Em- employing other people to do it. Uh, finding people. Meeting overhead. Maintaining a quality, a consistency. Generating public, distinguishing yourself amongst your peers and your competition. Retail was best summed up by Howard Schultz from Starbucks. He said, retail is not for the faint-hearted. And I think, you know, you'll only really know when you get in. But he also, same Mr. Schultz, yeah. he's managed to build an empire yes, out of absolutely, coffee. Absolutely, yeah, no, there's no, no denying it. So, what are the big problems for you? I presume everybody knows it's staff, 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 and staff. <clears throat> yeah, well, well, currently, you know, we've just kind of secular issues there across the industry. Uh, we've had kind of a perfect storm um, between inflation and food costs. Or but you've you, been through that before. Twenty-five years, we've you have had, seen ups yeah, and downs. Yeah, always. we've we've had we've had uh, aspects and elements over the years, um, but we've had currently now it's a cocktail of all of the above at one at one go. So it is a challenge. And in the last six months, let's call it, uh, we had the, the double whammy of uh, another increase in the minimum wage and a VAT reversal, which is a 50% increase in the VAT. So it's, it's, it's been a tough 12, 18 months, but, uh, you know, just got to just keep at it, keep going. And the minimum wage, is that really, I mean, it's a, it's a marginal increase on a minimum wage, but... Is it enough to really, really give well, you pain? Well, the minimum wage is only just a, it's a, it's a base, it's a, it's a point of reference. So many people uh, in the sector will have uh, their crew on wages greater than that. Uh, it's important for retention and reward. And then if you give the example of somebody who has been working in, in the industry for three years and then somebody walks through the door, the, the existing member of the team wants a distance in terms of the pay gap between what the other person and so it's just it's just um it's just a base and everything will go up pro rata to the increases and 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 the increases have been have been huge over the last number of years and it's an upper traje- trajectory and also the aspect is the main aspect is that it's it's out of the control of the employer so the main factors in food are cost of sale which is food cost which has been out of control. We we can't control that, given global and, and macro issues. Uh, the second big um, cost for business is labour, and we no longer have control of that. Uh, we we can't control. VAT. And you say so you don't have yeah. control over the labour. Is that just because there is no labour? It's, it's, it's because um, over the last number of years, um, the um, the government are striving towards getting the, the national living wage to a point. And as I said, it, that's a reference point, and therefore we can't control the, the end wage if we're, if the base is being moved every year. So, so it's it's a it's a perfect storm, and and then we have a situation where there are there's less footfall in the city centre post COVID. Offices haven't fully returned, so there's less people about. The city took a bit of a a, a beating there just before Christmas with the riots and what have you. So there's a little bit of negativity going on. So it's just, it's, as I say, it's just that kind of fusion of, of elements and we've dealt with some of them in the past, um, but having them all together uh, just makes it that bit more difficult. And you have already told me that you actually don't want to be that negative, but I'm making you be ne- that you're, you're negative. You're pushing me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get people yeah. to hear the pain. Yes, yeah. 
but there yeah. are solutions. Yeah. What are yeah. the big solutions that you have over the years? Twenty five years. What have you done to uh, actually get well, over the hurdles? Cut, you have to cut your. You have to cut your cloth. And um, I, I mean, in fact, the um, back in two thousand and eight, we had the financial crisis. I mean, that was a lot easier because we were coming off a very high base. Jeez, so you're the first person I've ever heard saying that was a lot easier. Yes, because, <laughs> because most most retailers and a lot of food businesses were, were over trading, so to speak. So as 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 team members left, you just wouldn't replace them. Okay. But we're coming off the base of COVID, post-COVID, and therefore everything has already been cut in terms of, say, uh, I mean, obviously you, you can't you can't cut you know your uh, your standards, okay? Uh, so you know you can't cut portion size, you can't cut you know oh, but your come ingredients. On, you, they do. I mean, I won't say you. Well, but... one one shouldn't. It's, yeah. it's not advisable. It's not a, that's not a good recipe, and, and and so therefore that's what makes it a little bit more challenging. And that we've already kind of cut post-COVID. And so then what with, you know, interest rates going up and people have less disposable income, it's just another another factor. So 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 really, I think what you'll find in, in the food business, I'm going to speak for myself um, as somebody that's a 25 year veteran. When you when you begin to look and see like businesses who have been in business even longer than us and they're hanging, I mean, they're, 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 they're putting their kind of close sign up. When you see people like that, that's the real indicator for, say, maybe politicians and influencers to realize that there is a bigger problem and there is it's not just the boy who cried wolf this is is genuine but you just have to kind of just keep going and uh and just try to do the best you can every single day you know which is the true mark of the entrepreneur yes. but there does come a time doesn't it when you just get tired yes yeah um it's you know it's it is a it is a it is a difficult time in this particular industry but I, I think we may be at the the trough, so to speak. And we've had a lot of ne- negativity. And I think if you're still around now, interest rates, we should see them begin to come down for people and that, that should be helpful towards a disposable income. And, um, you know, we depend on tourists and, you know, it's, 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 it's across the world. Uh, it's the same issues. And uh, so I think if you can get past this next couple of months, next six months, uh, a little bit of assistance from from the state would be great. Uh, so what, what you are know, you thinking or what are you saying there, assistance from the state? Would you like another COVID payment? Or, uh? No, 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 absolutely. No, 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 not, not in that sense. No, the only the only kind of lever that's available to the government, in my view, uh, or the principle would be, would be to revert the VAT back. Would that make a big difference? It would make a difference because then the, the business owner would, would, would not have to be handing over as much of their t- of their revenue on a monthly basis, but it would, you it would know help. why the government hates it. It's because other sectors are saying, "Oh well, look at they're getting away with it, and we don't." Well, I, it's not really a question of of getting away with it. Um, I think if they if they just keep an eye on their Twitter feeds and and watch the number of closures, I don't know if there is a point where somebody will wake up. But but I have never in twenty five years seen so many businesses in one particular sector closing. So. If that was across the board with other sectors, then I think they would equally they should they should appeal. But that would be the one lever which I think could potentially make a difference. I'm not saying it's a panacea or or an absolute fix, but it's available. Ian Hobbs, come in and save us quickly. Save you how? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> so I mean, look, obviously different ways we help businesses, and maybe it would have helped Aiden uh, when you talk about staff and. I suppose the labour of the business and everything you have to do would be the the automation tools within the likes of Big Red Cloud. Um, he mentioned a lot on the VAT and the VAT reports that are behind it. Um, but more recently, I think Aiden himself, our agent, excuse me, <laughs> do apologise, um, has more recently used our purchase importer system, which is Big Red Cloud's Pi. This would now allow you, rather than having to sit at the end of a month with a stack of paper, print it, and physically start manually entering it into a system, It'll allow you simply as those invoices come in, they will just email them away and they will automatically then populate into the purchase book, which is then going to help in the labor hours and maybe help you to focus on other parts of the business. Is that a normal part of your business? Do yeah. you have to enter in, I bought five yeah. cakes and I yeah. chopped them into 10? Yeah, so we, we would have been one of the one of the first uh, adopters of of Pi, the, 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 uh, the purchase importing system. And um, I was actually looking for something at, at the time. You're looking for a piece uh, of pie? Right? I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking for it. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, and, yeah. So uh, we were moving from a physical a physical office location to a home office situation. Uh, we, we have a bookkeeper who was going from five days down to two days. 
uh, post COVID. And so I, I didn't want to have uh, reams and reams. If you can imagine this, this, this small studio space, by the end of the year, we would have a good section of it filled with, uh, with lever arch files, with invoices, etc. And so I, I didn't know, I didn't want that any longer. Uh, and I wanted to have a, si- a situation where we could use, uh, get to a paperless. Uh, now we've been getting um, emails from our suppliers who were advising us that in, in time they would be moving to a, a greener solution. And so receiving invoices through PDF format, which is fine, except if you need to keep a physical copy, it's not a green solution because we would have to print. So in fact, what they were doing was just passing on the overhead to us. So, so we were paying for the paper <laughs> and we were paying for the toner. But to kind of, we, 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 we could hit that green mark by moving over to a, uh, a a paperless solution for invoicing, et cetera. So um, we got but, in But touch. when you go back yeah. for a physical record yeah. there, it's where's that, where does that live? <clears throat> It'll store the PDF within the system. In the um, cloud or uh, in the... Yeah, it lives within the system. So there is a hyperlink in there. Uh, you will see it within the purchase importer. You can do your search selection by month, by week, whichever you choose. And then you will see the purchase attached to it, the costs aligned. Click on, click on the hyperlink and uh, it'll open up the, the PDF, which you can print later if you need to. And Adrian, in yeah. my simple mind, I would have thought that back in the day, you sold 10 cups of coffee and you reconciled in the end of the day, 10 times 3 euro, whatever, 30 quid, 30 quid in the uh, till. That was easy. It's obviously way different to that. Well, well, everything that everything that goes out is the, is the, the net of what comes in. So in other words... For one particular product to go out, that I mean, for example, you mentioned a cup, of, a cup of coffee. I mean, this is a typical coffee that's going out the door has a lid. It has, comes in a cup. Maybe the cup has got a jacket on the outside, a Java jacket they call it. There's a coffee bean. It's potentially a milk, a sugar, and every other number of items. There's the electricity and the gas that went in, perhaps to, to run the machine. There's the lights that has to be paid for, and every one of them produces a piece of paper. And so, if you can imagine one small business like ours employing 17 people uh, with one location and we're doing X number of boxes of lever arch files. So if you can imagine two locations or three locations, it's multiples of paper. And so now with this system, they're gone. They don't exist. Our, our end of year, we now have five lever arch files to keep. And, and, and one of those are, are bank statements, which take two of the files. One is a uh, a physical copy of pay slips, and so really we've gone from my my attic is now gradually uh, I'm getting it back because you had to hold your um you had to hold your your paperwork for, for the number of years for for revenue, and so now over the next six years my attic I will get it back because all our paperwork is now in the cloud, higher holding it, and easy to adopt, easy. Really easy. Um, we were looking at various systems. We we had been with a competitive system for over twenty years, and uh, we looked at their system. We looked at costing. We wanted to we wanted to move to a system that was very kind of similar in approach. Uh, and there was a com- another competitor that was already uh, offering the solution. And uh, Big Red Cloud were moving towards this. It was coming. Okay. And we were assured that it was going to come, say, within X number of months, and 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 it, and, and it arrived, and so we moved over, and um, the actual the actual accounting day to day bookkeeping system was just easy easy for our bookkeeper. There, there was no no training required, just straight in. Now I'm sure you're going to say Ian Hobbs, but yeah. what was the way that what made you tip over from uh, from provider X to Big Red Cloud? Well, uh, we went to the went on the market to see what was out there, but we were we were going to the market looking for a, a for a paperless solution. Mm-hmm. So that's what we were looking for. We weren't looking. I mean, there were multiple options for for book for bookkeeping solutions, but we were that was the emphasis that we were coming in on. Researching online, or do you go to fellow um, coffee shop owners uh, and say, well, "What well, are well, you I would using?" Have gone to, no, uh, I would have, I would have gone to our um, our auditors, and and they in fact were offering uh, another solution and. Uh, it was a very good solution, um, but it was a it was very different in terms of the processing, and there would have been quite a bit of a- adaptation and, and training required for a bookkeeper. And I, I I did the I did the Google search. Now, as 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 it happens, I I would have had a I would have known um, some of the personnel 
in, in the right cloud. So I was able to kind of ask the question directly, and uh, and we got a we got a we got a quick honest answer. It's not available today, but it will be available in X number of months, and it was, and and we haven't looked back since we've we've put it into place. That's okay, yeah. so Ian, available for all sectors, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I mean, we help all industries out there. The system can be designed uh, to to suit and match any ones that come. I mean, development would be one of our biggest pain points, as you mentioned at the start. I suppose we did have the solution in the beginning, and in our dream to keep everything Irish, we we got with another automation company that was an Irish company. Unfortunately, I feel they didn't see the opportunity that we we had provided for them, and. Um, the solution just didn't do it all, so we then ended up late to the game. But with that, we've managed to develop our own version of the purchase importer. So it's all under our roof now and our control. And with that, we can give the customers the support and the, the love that's needed because that's where it's at. That's what you yeah. need, isn't it, Adrian? The yeah. love. Did it yeah. save you any money? Yes, it's, it's, it, has, it has saved money, but it wasn't just about saving money it, it was about being able to, to work in a, in a different, in a basically, we have a home office. And so space was it was it was a premium. So it might might be something that you could you would think about. But like say for example, I would say and I kind of if I threw my hat back of when I was just starting off, and you know the, the, the naivety of just going in and you know and then having to everything every day was a new discovery and uh, and and uh, you know you, you you have to learn very quickly uh, and so. If you can imagine a situation where maybe somebody in, a, in, a, in a, maybe perhaps in a small business speaking for a small business for example. And and they're trying to reduce their overhead and not get into an office and maybe trying to run it from their house, for example, uh, to be able to just have a computer or a laptop. I mean, um, our bookkeeper comes in for about three hours a week. The rest, she just dials in into 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 the computer. She can be anywhere, uh, and she could be on holiday. You know, she well, not that she would be, but you know, <laughs> if, if required, uh, I could be away. I can go in and. Uh, you know, it's it's not just always about saving money, but but it, it is a good value proposition as well. And in terms yeah. of being put off, people will be put off by saying, "Oh God!" As you you start yeah. by saying that you have to rejig your system, and 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 you just say problems. No, yes, no. We we, we it was seamless. Oh, that's all right. It, it was it that's was good. it was seamless. We, we you were, haven't been paid we, to say this. You no, know, not in the slightest. No, <laughs> no, no. I, 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 I would, I would, because if I, I actually wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't have a chat about something that I didn't support. Right. Uh, but certainly, the uh, having gone from say a very traditional type system, uh, it, it was it was seamless in that regard. And then in terms of the uh, adopting, I'll give you a simple example. Just just if I went into a car park and it was something to, you know, something to do with with the business and and the receipt was valid, for example, uh, as an expense. I would just take my phone, take a picture of the receipt, save as a PDF and email it. And then next time we turn on the computer or turn on the software, it's sitting there to be validated. I mean, that's easy. I don't have to worry about losing the docket. And that's just another thing, you know? Oh yeah, don't talk to me about that. Yeah, filling in forms. No, thank you. Anyway, yeah. That is really interesting. Any other final points that you want to make, uh, Ian, about... uh, I suppose, as he mentions, getting on board and and coming on at the start and trying to learn whole new systems, we we do have a full onboarding process behind that. And we try to bring a customer on a a full journey with that. How long does it take? Hmm. I mean, we, it depends on how, I suppose, organized the data is that's there, but we could have you up and running within five days and sometimes one day. My process behind it would be, first of all, I'd start with a demonstration where I'll bring you to the system and I'll give you a full flavor of it first. And I always tell people, that's not an educational course. Please don't bring notes and, and you know, you're not here yeah. to learn anything today. It's to give you the confidence and the information to make a decision. And then... Once you've made that decision and, you know, the end goal is obviously a yes and that's something you want to work with, from there, what I usually do is apply a setup relevant to your industry and that usually needs to be tweaked because there's language that's different in every business and personal to each business. And once that is tweaked, then I start and do everything in just baby steps. So a short little video on how to enter your customers, your suppliers if needed. And then from there, it's call me bank. I like to start with the purchase invoices. And there's maybe six, seven, five, ten minute calls uh, accounting is so complex and it's such a struggle for businesses and, and business owners. I um, mean, agents' experience is running a coffee shop. It's not accounting. And we've made that simple, without doubt. You know, it is simple and easy to use, I say, but mostly I feel when someone shows you. 
You know, what I'd love is uh, if people are listening, if they sent us in any queries that they do have, particularly, you know, kind of weird problems that they've run into, producer at thatgreatbusinessshow.com, and we'll pass it on to the lads. And uh, as I say, this is a mini-series that's going to continue now, uh, thanks to Big Red Cloud. So my thanks to Adrian Reynolds and to uh, Ian Hobbs, who is with Big Red Cloud as well. So um, we will be back with another episode of this mini-series called Business 101. De facto, the revolutionary shaving oil, changing the face of shaving. For the smoothest shave of your life, just add water. No more lathering up or cleaning up afterward. Just add a few drops of water and you're ready to go. De facto's blend of all natural oils hydrates and protects your skin. No more razor burns or irritation. A spa treatment for your face. Perfect for all skin types and lasts so much longer than traditional foams or gels. De facto, a shaving revolution. Just add water. Available from selected pharmacies and from defactoshave.com. It's all go like horsey gno on that great business show.com. That great business show. And that is it for episode 183 of That Great Business Show. Great business insights and inspiration. And regular listeners know that we're true believers in business mentors. So make sure to check out mentorswork.ie to unlock the full potential of your business. It's a fully government-funded mentoring program designed to fuel the growth of your business, no matter the sector or the size. Also, sign up for email updates and we will send you your own personal copy of the podcast at thatgreatbusinessshow.com. Share us, like us, give us five-star reviews. It all helps and do advertise with us on That Great Business Show to engage with our absolutely incredible audience of entrepreneurs, business owners, business investors, business lovers. We record at the Dublin South Podcast Studios where today's studio engineer is Terry Brock. Later, the Dynamics duo of studio manager Peter Rice and post-production engineer Neil Horner ensure we remain the world's best-sounding business podcast. So from me, Conal Moran, we'll to you all of us, Slan Tamil. Oh,